Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Cliff, and I am so excited to be able to teach today. But before we jump into today's message, um, I wanted to share something because my brother Clifford, where is, I think he's outside, Clifford did that song. Oh, there he is right there. That's the other Clifford, right? Um, and it reminded me of my Tuesday this week. And so this, again, this is not part of the message, but I felt, to, I felt the need to be able to share this. So thank you for reminding me of the, my Tuesday. So my Tuesday, um, well, let me back up. On Monday, I started a fast, a three-day fast, because there's something I've been praying for that I really, um, it's something that's dear on my heart. We're trying to um, make an acquisition of a company um, so that way we can actually be able to do more in the community, build homes and stuff like that. And so it's something that I was like, you know what, I'm gonna pray for and I'm gonna fast about for these three days. So on that Tuesday, I was like, there's something that I've been um, delaying in doing, is creating the plan for it. And so I was like, I have to sit down and I'm sitting in bed next to my wife and we were talking about songs because there's a song by Casting Crowns called Start Right Here. And so it kept convicting me every time I hear it. And I was telling my wife, I don't know what it is about this song, but every time I hear this song, I start to get emotional and it starts to build up. But to me, the song's too short. And so I feel like it's getting ready and I'm about to just just start bawling and it's like the song's over. <laughs> so I'm like put, trying to hear it and go back so I can just let it out. Right. And. I told my wife, I was like, I don't know what it is about this song, but I, and I said, there's only a couple of songs that I hear that will really make me like just lose it, right? And those other songs are songs that I was listening to when my dad passed. After he passed, these were the songs that I would listen to all the time. And so I'm starting to work on this PowerPoint and I'm listening to this, the music and I just, I start crying. I can't hold it. I let it go and I'm trying to focus and I'm doing a little bit and then the songs that I would listen to when my dad passed, those songs started to come on. And my wife is like, what's wrong? I was like, I'm just tired. Cause I've been on this fight to do this for a while. And I just, I was like, I'm tired. I feel beat down. I feel, I don't know why it gets so hard to even do the, to get the little things done in this process. And so I was like, I don't know what's going on. And she's like, you know, well, what are you feeling? I feel like I, it's just that, you know, should I, I know I'm supposed to keep going, but why is it so hard? Why am I facing so much adversity when I feel like I'm the closest? And again, I told her, I feel like I'm getting beat down. And I was like, I don't know why that I have to keep fighting and getting beat. And then God showed me an image. I promise you, it was clear as day as he's walking down the street carrying this cross, being beaten. And in that moment, God was reminding me, they beat me too. But it was on my, he, was, he, he reminded me it was on his way to fulfill his destiny. And so when you feel like it's getting tough, when you feel like you're getting beat from every angle, then know that you're doing something right because you are on your way to your destiny, okay? So, I ain't starting off this message in tears, so I'm gonna hold that back. So we about to jump into this one, all right? So, um, hi. All right, all right? So my wife and I, we've been married for about 14 years and a little over, thank you, thank you, thank you. And so a lot of people, especially in our age group, always ask, like, what's the secret, you know, to being married? And we've had our different answers over the years. But every time I hear that question, I think about my uh, conversation we had with my Uncle Stoney. And so he said, my wife one day was like, Unc, like, what's the secret? Because they've been married for a little over 30 years. And so she's like, what's the secret? And without skipping a beat, he says, social distancing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I guess you may need a little bit of that time to time. But when I really look at the keys to a successful relationship, 
to me, there's three. There's you, there's them, and then there's vulnerable communication. Now, if you got more than that, that's not complicated. That's an entanglement. <laughs> but for me, understanding communication is great, but vulnerable communication. You see, vulnerability is about stripping down layers, about pulling things off. So today, we're going to get N-A-K-E-D. So hoping that any of the kids in here can S-P-E-L-L. <laughs> Wait a minute, some of the adults in here like, <laughs> I said, I spelled out naked, okay? I spelled out naked. <laughs> you should have, from here I can see everything, right? So all of those that was just like, <laughs> it's, it's, you, it's incredible to watch people think, right? Because you can see everything happening. You can see the letters, because right so let's get naked right since the beginning side note i called pastor danny and i was like listen the title of the message is going to be the you know it's the relationship series it's complicated i wanted it to be let's get naked but i was like nah that's a little too much <laughs> right he's like and so i was like it's just going to be vulnerable communication and so he's like okay yeah that's better <laughs> but since the beginning of time this idea of being naked has always been there. So if we go to the scripture in Genesis chapter 3, so let me set this, the scene up. This is where Adam and Eve are walking through the garden, and the serpent had just convinced them to eat of the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And so we pick it up from that point. And Genesis um, chapter 3, verse 10 and 11, it says, I heard you in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he, God, said, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from that tree that I commanded you not to? You see, it was never about them being naked. They were always naked. So why now? It was this event that caused them to realize that they were naked. So you know me, whenever I teach, I got questions. I want to know something. I have something that I need you to think about, to ponder on. And so my question to you is, what event in your life has told you that you're naked? You see, being vulnerable is who we are at our core, right? It's, it's how we can relate to someone. So for me, I have another question for you. I want to know, how can you expect someone to love you when you haven't taken time to truly introduce yourself to them? You want somebody to understand you and be there for you, to be able to wrap your arms around you, but you're not being open and vulnerable. So let's imagine for a moment right now. Let's imagine that God has allowed me to peer inside of that heart of yours that you've locked up and you've built a shelter around made out of steel and barbed wire that even Superman can't see through. But allow for a second to imagine that God has allowed me to see inside. What's in there? Is it the feelingness of being broken? Is it a past ab abuse, physically, emotionally? Is it a tumultuous relationship with a parent that's in there? Is it something when in your college days that you want to forget? Maybe it's a miscarriage or an abortion. Maybe it's something that you're trying to keep away because if you let anybody in to see what's in there, they may not accept you the way that you want them to. You see, we go through life wanting to be connected, but we wait so long to be able to open ourselves up to allow somebody to connect with us. Why do we wait till we've invested ourselves in our time inside of a relationship and then we want to share. I mean, I'm not telling you on the first date to go in and be like, listen, 
I got some things in my past. <laughs> and I may not be too proud. No, no, hold on, hold on. You know, you have to be able to get work your way into it, but don't wait until the person is getting ready to propose to finally say, you know what, I got some things in my past I need you to know about. Or don't not share at all. You go through life and if you don't take time to share, then those things that are in your past will find their way into your future. We all have baggage. It's kind of like the airport. If you go to the airport, everybody got some baggage. Why are we so convinced that what's in our luggage is so profound that nobody can imagine handling? I mean, we live in a broken world, so I can guarantee you that the stuff that you have in your bag, it'll be, you'll be amazed to see and look around this room to find out that there's so many people that have those same things in that same bag. It just belongs to a different person. So don't be afraid of the baggage. Start to unpack the baggage a little bit. You see, there's this, this um, thing about vulnerability that it equals weakness. And see, for me, listen, I'm a strong black man. Ain't nothing about this man that is weak. When I cry, I am still standing in strength because I am standing on the shoulders of my God. So I want you to understand that there is no need to feel like if I share and I open up a little bit that I am being weak. No, you are being strong. While I was preparing for the message, I came across this author, Breen Brown, um, her book, Braving the Wilderness. It says vulnerability is not weakness. It is our most accurate measure of courage. You see, as teachers, myself and Pastor Danny or Gabby or, or Ryan will get up here and our job is to be able to open up and be vulnerable on this stage. We have to let you into what's going on in our lives. We have to let you in because I've always said that a perspective without experience lacks clarity. And so for me, I have this thing in my head and wrong or right, maybe I'll ask God when I get to heaven, do we as leaders go through things so that way we can share it with you? See, we've had to be built to be able to carry these things. We've had to be able to shoulder these things. We get beat down and we get emotionally drained the same as you. But God has called us to be able to come up here and share our hearts with you, to let you in and know that we have these issues too. We have baggage that we're carrying. Now, some of us bags are bigger than others, but we all have bags. So if we just take the time to start to want to share and open up and unpack those bags with somebody, you'll be amazed at what the results will turn into. It's kind of like you go through life trying to figure out how do I get someone to love me? How do I get somebody to feel connected with me? Well, how can they when you have everything protected, right? So when you go through life and you start to figure out that you're in this relationship and you're wondering why things aren't progressing the way that you want to and that person is starting to feel a little bit more distant, Maybe it's because of the baggage that you're holding that you won't let them inside and let them know that it's a past relationship that's in there that's causing you to act that way. You see, for some reason, when you get into a new relationship, that new person ends up paying for the things that the old person did. It's kind of like going to a restaurant, sitting down by yourself, and when you sit down, instead of the waiter coming over with the menu, they come over with the bill. And the bill is for the couple that just left, saying you have to pay for their meal. 
And then that lady from that couple comes back and sits down with you and then you eat dinner with her. And now you've paid for that meal. You see, you've paid twice. And I'm not just talking about the meal. See, you've paid for their other person's issues and the things that they did. But then you're paying again because now as much as you hope for and desire to be able to get to that other person's heart, you just cannot. You see, one of the things I want you guys to understand is that if you have this heart all bound up and protected, that may make sense. It's a good idea, right? Let's just protect it. Let's keep it safe so no one can get in and hurt you anymore. No one can get in to be able to do the things that they did to you to break your heart anymore. That makes sense, right? Nah, it doesn't. And the reason why I say it doesn't is because if nothing bad can come in, nothing good can come in either. And if nothing good or bad can come in, then nothing good or bad can get out. So who are we meeting? Is it just the representative? Because you haven't allowed your true self to come out and be introduced to the world because we're afraid of how they're going to react. We're afraid of what they might say. But you're asking to accept somebody that's not you. And then when those little traits of you start to peek out, the other person says you're different. So when can we start being vulnerable? Some of us, it's like we go to a taco spot. We go to the taco spot we're like, listen, listen, we're going out tonight. We're going to this taco spot. I heard it's fire. They got great tacos. They got great nachos. You go there and the tacos are terrible. That thing give you the bubble guts. Right. You're not happy. Right. Some of us start to swear off all tacos, meaning you're not going to let anybody else in. Instead of. And when that happens in real life, we don't we swear off all tacos. Tacos are great. We just go to a different taco spot. But some of us keep going back to that old taco spot. Hoping and praying that God is going to change his, that your tummy don't hurt no more. We don't learn. Why do we keep going back to that same taco spot <laughs> thinking that them tacos going to get better? That he going to treat you better. That she going to treat you better. They've given you the signs. They've showed you who they are. The person that's treating you bad, they're not changing because you've allowed it and you've gone back. So you've confirmed that it's okay. Maybe you need to find a different taco spot. But don't go there with this guard up, protected that I can't, you can't enjoy being in another relationship. What does that serve you? It won't. Maybe you need to change your type. <laughs> Maybe that type that you keep choosing ain't your type. You see, <laughs> I, I, I hear it. <laughs> so, for me, I can stand here confidently and tell you that I was not my wife's type. I confirmed it on Friday and asked her. I was like, I'm getting ready to do this message. And I, I just got a question for you. Like, was I your type? And she was like, no. <laughs> but it's OK. All right. So for the uninitiated, I'll give you the cliff note version of our relationship. Met my wife blind date um, and I was like down like couldn't believe it right I'm like yes <laughs> but she kept me in a friend zone for two years <laughs> we broke up as friends I said I love you she said thank you <laughs> it's tough it's rough out here 
but I wasn't her type. But I mean, how could I be? I mean, I'm one of a kind. I'm, you know, she ain't seen nothing like this here before. This intelligent, young, handsome black man is just, there's no, there's no other blueprint because when God got done with it, he was like, that thing was perfect. And so how could she have a type for something that she ain't never seen before? So maybe you need to change your type, right? Stop choosing these people out here that's not mentally, emotionally, mature enough to handle a butter knife. You got to be open. You got to be vulnerable. It's scary. But you can do it. In Bringing Brown's book, Rising Strong, it says vulnerability. The willingness to show up and be seen with no guarantee of the outcome. You don't know how they're going to receive you. You don't know the outcome, but you gotta try it. You gotta go, you owe it to yourself. Every time, it doesn't matter. It's not gonna serve you well if you go there with a closed heart. Once you go through this relationship and you are vulnerable and you start to unpack things together, now you guys can pack the luggage together. You've taken out all of the old stuff, right? And now you can pack it with things like love and kindness and joy. There's gonna be crap along the way, but together you deal with that crap. So open your heart, open your mind, Share it all. Share your triumphs and your fears, your hopes and your joys, the things you want to accomplish, the things on your bucket list, the things that make you scared at night, whatever that may be. Share those things that is like, I like the way you show your love to me. I like the way when you give me a hug, it gives me the, the chills or the tingles on my back. I mean, share those intimate things like, I like it when you do... Well, you know. <laughs> or I don't like it when you do that. But that's how you have a good relationship. Because when you can share everything, that, that person becomes your best friend. They know you better than anybody else. They know when things are not right. They can see you across the room and look at you and be like, all right, I need to go over there because they may be uncomfortable. You can share it all. But when you share the good and the bad, speak with love. Speak with power. You see, it says in the scriptures, Proverbs 18, 21, the tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat of its fruit. James 1.19 says, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. When you're in a relationship and you're trying to be vulnerable, don't allow your vulnerability to be able to be defensive in everything that you say and do. Because if that person truly loves you, they want nothing but the best for you. So be slow to, be, to get anger. Stop, step back and really take a look of what that person is trying to say. What you're trying to say. There's no reason to go and be in a relationship and a person be mad at you for months. And the person, and if you're that person that gets mad for months, why? Why? They just left the lid off the mayonnaise jar. <laughs> but it's, if you really look at it, they're not mad about that. It's because they haven't taken time to unpack something else. You see, that, that mayonnaise jar represented something else. So slow down, evaluate it. 
Ask yourself if you're holding on a little too tight. Is your fist clenched in thought in trying to process what has been said and done? If so, pull back. Realize you're holding on a little too tight. Be kind and compassionate. Ephesians 4.32, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ God forgave you. Why is it hard for people to say I'm sorry? Ladies. <laughs> I may need a ride home. I may need a ride. <laughs> Guys, too. Guys, too. But y'all ladies, I'm just saying, say sorry. It's okay to say sorry without attitude. I'm sorry. <laughs> I said it. <laughs> see, if that guy responded, see, that's why your breast smell like corn chips and vinegar. That ain't right. That ain't right. Beating the wrong kind of things. It's okay to say sorry. There's no weakness in saying sorry. It's strength. You're able to step up and be who God is calling you to be. If you've made a mistake, be done with it. Say you're sorry and keep going on from there. When you say I'm sorry or when you say I forgive you, in the Bible it says that when we sin or we do something wrong, God, and you go and you ask God to please forgive me, he says, they says he throws it into the sea of forgetfulness, right? So we are called to forgive and to forget. Now let's break that down for a second. Truth be told, nobody's really forgetting, right? Like I remember what you just did, right? I forgive you, you know, but this thing about forgetting is a tough one. It's like, I forgive you, but I don't forget. And you know, but the idea of forgive or forget, the forget part is forgetting to recall, forgetting to bring it back up. You forgave them. Of course, you haven't forget what happened, but you're forgetting to recall it because for it, it, it is pointless to bring that back. They forgiving you. You have to be able to let it go. You can't walk around with, this is my little bear. It's not mine, but for the illustration. This is Tally Berry. I didn't say Halle Berry. You can't keep putting a tally on all the times that that person hurt you. I forgive you, but it's, it's going in the jar. I forgive you, but what's that number? 193,000. I know a guy that is, has been married for a little over, I think he's coming up to his 30 year anniversary. Now, when they first got married, I think within year one or two, they were sitting out at a restaurant and he saw this fine woman go walking by and he's followed as well. And his newly bride saw him. He told me, he said, Cliff, you know, sometimes that that still comes up in arguments today. Jeez. <laughs> you can't keep tallies. What does it serve you? What does it serve your heart for holding it? It won't serve you well. You sit up there waiting for something else to find its relativity, but the, every situation should stand alone. It should be forgiven and forgotten to be recalled by itself. There was something... Um, that happened with my wife and I where there was something that she kept mentioning over a couple year period. It was some, it was, came out as a joke, but it was something that meant something more to me that bothered me. 
And so every time it said, every time she said it, it was something that just kept, it didn't just bother me, like it hurt because of what it meant, right? Now I may have said like, I don't like that or whatever the case may be, but it was never like me sitting down and really explaining it to her. So one day we were sitting on the couch and we were having a discussion and it, tears started to roll up in my eye or to fill up in my eyes. And I explained to her why that hurt, why that was so hard for me to keep hearing. And so she apologized and tears started coming down her eyes because she never intended to hurt me, right? But I had to be vulnerable and tell her why. It was the cutest thing the next day. She, was, she even wrote me a little handwritten note of saying I'm sorry. Now that's how you say I'm sorry. <laughs> but I forgave her quickly. Of course I remember what it was, but I'm good. I forget to recall that. I forget to bring that up. That has no bearing in my life anymore. It has no weight. So when we forgive, we must forget. It is for us. Lee Noren says, communication is the backbone of a good relationship. It is through communicating with one another that we could build emotional intimacy. Tony A. Gaskin says, communication to a relationship is like oxygen is to life. Without it, it dies. So as I close, I have a question again. What do you have to lose? What do you have to lose by being vulnerable? Get hurt again? That's what we fear? Guess what? You can get hurt by not letting someone in. Because you go and you get emotionally invested into this person and you're super excited to be with them, but they feel like they don't know you because you haven't let them in. The possibility of being hurt is always going to be there. I can't stand here and say, listen, you're not going to get hurt if you open yourself up. There's cruel people out there. They may use it against you. Then you know how to separate yourself. But... Why be closed off when you're praying for God to bring you that special someone? And he's like, I did. I sent him to you two guys ago. But because you never opened your heart, you didn't know how to receive him or her. So be open, be vulnerable. There's a risk versus reward. I'm in construction and so we when we get ready to start a new project, we do like a risk mitigation, right? And so we have to understand what are the risks and rewards as we go through a project and wanting to make sure that we can complete it the way it needs to be completed. Do a risk mitigation about your relationship going into it. If I open myself up, what's the risk? If I really let somebody in, what's the reward? And I promise you every time the reward can be great and it's worth it. So just try. When you talk about having those relations, once you're in a relationship and you need to know how to communicate during a discussion, that's what we call it. We don't call it arguing or we call it a discussion. Right? Have rules of engagement, right? Here's four of ours, no yelling. Right. Because in an argument or a discussion, yelling is like double Dutch. You guys remember double Dutch? Right. The two girls twirling the rope like this. Nobody's really listening. They're just waiting for their chance to jump in. Share your heart. Number two, no calling each other out of their name. Respect at all times. You don't go down that alphabet. No B, 
no C, no D, no W. Some of y'all thought it started with an H. <laughs> y'all look at that on the way home. <laughs> be respectful. Why would you want to be part of the breaking down of someone that you love? Don't do that. Number three, no cursing. May be hard. And the reason why I say no cursing, because cursing takes things to another level. When somebody really wants to intense, be intense about what they're saying, a curse may come, a curse word may come out. Why do that at a time where you're trying to de-escalate the situation? Lastly, no interrupting. Yee. It's hard. We're not perfect at it. But try. Like, I'm sorry. You know what? You're right. My bad. I, I try to jump in. Be ready. But maybe using that as if you've jumped in, maybe that's a conviction that you wasn't really given a chance to listen all the way. Final things. I got two question, questions for you. The first one is one that I came up while preparing for this message. And this is a good one to ask in a relationship. We'll see how it goes if I, when I get ready to ask this one. What can I hold you accountable for? We as partners are meant to hold each other accountable to be good to each other, to be able to serve each other well and know how to serve one another, right? Set pride aside. Pride in your relationship is only good when it's pride about who you have next to you together. But pride against each other has no purpose. It will wither away your relationship quickly like rust. So be open to serve one another. If I get home from work, I can walk in the house and my wife can see it. She'll tell me to sit down and she'll take my shoes off. Right? And likewise, if she getting dressed and she need me to lotion her legs, I don't mind it. Come on over or put her, put her heels on. I do that. And what's interesting, if what we've noticed is our kids see it. So my daughter will try to come and take my shoes off for me. Be who you want your kids to be with. Last question. Or actually, it's not a question. Be vulnerable with God. Be vulnerable with God because how many of us are worried and afraid to go to God with the stuff that's in our luggage as if he doesn't know. All powerful, check, all knowing, oh, he already knows and he loves you anyway. So why not go and be vulnerable with him? Or maybe the truth is you haven't had the courage to be vulnerable with yourself? Have you taken the time to be vulnerable with yourself, to talk with yourself about the things that you've experienced? Have you and yourself had a conversation to be okay, to be able to go through what you've gone through? Know that you've gone through it. You're, that you're not weak for that, you're strong. You have a pillar to stand on. You have that situation that you've looked at in a negative light. And now you can say that I'm stronger for it. Because if I've gone through that, what can't I face? The last thing I'll tell you is stop looking for your peace and your strength in someone else. Pastor Danny has said this many of times. You're not going to find it in them. Maybe you find it temporarily, but what happens if they leave? What happens if they die? Does your happiness and your peace and your joy leave with them? 
You have to have it rooted in God for, because he will never leave or nor forsake you. He may seem distant, like he's over here, like you've been calling and you're just getting just a busy tone, but he's right there. He's someone that you can stand on confidently and allow your truth to be rooted in him. Let us pray. God, we come to you stripped down. We come to you asking you to come into those most intimate and deep portions of our heart. We ask that you help us to be able to unclutter and take out all of those things in our baggage that we've carried for so long, that we've been hiding for so long, Lord. Help us to be able to heal and move those things out of the way. And then help us to be able to fill that luggage with your peace. Fill it with your grace and your mercy and your kindness and your joy and your wisdom. Help us to be whole in all of our relationships. Help us to be whole with our relationship with you. Help us to be able to look to you and know that you love us no matter the things that we've gone through. There's nothing that, we can, that we've gone through that we should feel any shame about. Because you have written our story and you continue to write it each and every day. Bless every person that is in this room and help their hearts to be filled with love. We ask this in your son Jesus' name we do pray and every heart says. Amen. All right, Hartway, love you guys. I pray that today's message has impacted you guys in a positive way. Be careful out there, it's raining, I love you. Take care.